do safe words keep you safe? you do need them. Safe words is, uh, is, is one of the most powerful things that I found out in power exchange. And not because I was so good at saying no, but because I was not good at saying no. And I realized at one point that the point is when you don't say no, it's really hard for the other to see what they want. Because the point is, if you don't say no, you expect in a way the other who is responsible for your well-being or took that responsibility that you are giving away your responsibility of taking care of you, you give it to your partner. And you expect them to read your mind, read your body, to know exactly what's going on in you. And he won't know. But it doesn't have to be, it, it, it doesn't really matter. And it really doesn't matter in anything that you do. I mean, I was, uh, a few days ago, I wanted to buy a new mattress. But I have a very, very small guy, a uh, small car, a Toyota Aigo. That mattress is not going to fit in there. So I put a message in a, in a WhatsApp group from here in the, in the neighborhood. And I said, is there anyone who uh, I can borrow this car or would mind, wouldn't mind driving me? It's five minutes away and to pick up my mattress and to bring it home. So at one point, my neighbor said, sure, I'll bring you with the bus. Said, Perfect. There were two other people, but they couldn't make it uh, during daytime. So at one point, I decided to go with my neighbor. When he was in front of my door, he sent me a message. I'm here and he was hooting and was like very, very annoyed. I was like, what's going on? So I, I stepped into his car and he was very, very moody. So I asked him like, what's going on? What is this? And he said, yeah, you put it in the WhatsApp group because you wanted me to react on it, right? Because I'm the only one with the bus. I was like, what the fuck? Because I didn't. There were two other people who also offered me their car. I mean, I could have another car that just had like a hook on the on the back. You know, I don't know what that's called in English, but you can just put the cart on it and then I could, could have put the putters in that. That would work fine for me. I mean, I know where I can get the car. So that was really not the case. But the whole problem makes something very, very clear for me. Because I will never, ever ask him again anything. And you know why? Because if I cannot trust his no, how can I trust his yes? He wanted to say no, but he said yes. So he did something and he was protesting in the meantime. How can I trust him? If I don't know if he's going to mean it and if he's going to wholeheartedly offer me to do something for me, how can I trust him that he'll be right? that he'll be fine with doing something like that. And the exact same thing goes in the bedroom. And for anything else, by the way, that's the wonderful thing of safe words. If you're able to say no, then your dominant will know that you're also able to say yes and that you're in it. And it's something to practice. And this is something that I sucked a long time. So, Here's a tip for you. If you're a dominant and you have a submissive who is struggling with saying no, and you want them to teach them because they have to say no, here's the thing. Find something that they need to do that at one point they will have to say no. An option would be put them on their toes, on a, on a rope, put the rope on, up. So, I mean, it's, that will hurt, right? In your crotch and it's bearable until you can't take it anymore standing on your toes and the moment that you can't take it anymore they will have to say no you are not going to interfere with it and you need to make that clear for them also in that way at one point they will have to say no and you will see that the moment that you say no for the first time it will get easier and easier so then you'll get there at one point so just make sure and just remember, if I can trust your no, then I can trust your yes. So yes, safe words are crucial. You need safe words. And I know there will be uh, times that you might not be able to use your safe word because you're drifting off in subspace and you're so happy and you actually have no clue. But that means that for you, it doesn't feel like you need your safe word. So for sure, as a dominant, you also need to pay attention to physical aspects and to their bodies and of course, be aware, always. 
in that sense for safe words sometimes it's not possible to te to talk simply because you're not able to you're crying too hard or so find a way that you can also express a safe word without saying actually the word for instance uh, maybe you just forgot the safe word that also happens <laughs> trust me i know for instance just do it like this when you're gagged put something in your hand that you can drop the moment that you're not okay anymore that's a very very effective signal uh, for your dominant to know uh, when to stop and you know i think it's safer to use your safe word more often than less often and that's also why we created a third safe word right it's not just red and green like green is like everything is going fine i'm really enjoying it and red is like stop it please i can't take it anymore there's something in between it's called orange or yellow i think in in, in english it's yellow our traffic lights have orange they don't have yellow <laughs> at least we call it orange so that's in my safer repertoire i'm also calling it orange if you're an english talker you probably call it yellow anyway it doesn't really matter what you call it but the in the in between level there's another safe word that you can create and that says I can barely take it, so beware that you're on the edge. So please slow down a bit, or at least don't go any further. That's a perfect, uh, um, a perfect safe word to express where you are on that moment. And that's wonderful to stay in connection. And it's a matter of taking your responsibility, because in the end, there's only one person responsible for your health and for your well-being, and that's you. It's not your dominant. You are. So if you're not using your safe word, it's also your problem. So take that responsibility, please. And, 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 and I mean, just practice. Saying no is also a practice. If I'm giving a training with a lot of people in it, I'm just going to let them walk around. They have to write a few things down that they need help with. And they're just going to ask people and the other people need to, need to actually say no. I'm just, I'm just doing it like that. So what you could do now is just... Try and find someone in your environment. And what you're going to do is you're going to practice it together. It would be wonderful if you could do that with your partner. What you're going to do is you're just going to write three things down that you would like. Um, for instance, it could be like, I need a, baby, a babysitter. I would like to have piano lessons. Can you help me? Uh, can, can you wash my car, please? It really, doesn't really re it really doesn't matter what you want. It can be very, very effective to do it as partners and say like, uh, can you please put the garbage outside? And then uh, I'm going. And then what you do is make nine questions in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an order. The point is the first time you're not, it doesn't really matter whether you want to say yes or no, but you're going to say yes on everything. And I want you to feel what it feels like to say yes, but do it wholeheartedly and feel what it does to you. And it will be different with any question, with every question. That's for the first three questions. Then for the second three questions, you're going to ask the question and the other person says no. And you do it to each other. Then with the last three, after you did this, and please write down for yourself what it felt like. With the last three, I want you to think about it really. Do I want to do this or do I want to help this person? And then you decide whether you say yes or no. But then you already have practiced. It will give you a lot of insights in why you want to say yes, why you want to say no, because you want to say yes, because you want to probably please someone or because you want to be liked or you don't want to be seen as harsh or blunt or I don't know. There can be so many reasons for you why you say yes or why you say no, because you think you should be, say, should be saying yes, because it's, so you're supposed to be saying yes, because you think it's your role. And that's why it's so effective to, uh, to, uh, to use them. So I hope this exercise is valuable for you and I'm wishing you a lot of fun. Play with passion. If you want to know more this type of tips, I created a year program for couples to create and to build up a power exchange relationship. It's all about power exchange, of course, but there's also lots of like this type of exercises where I can teach you how to build up like a thriving relationship so if you're interested let me know in the comments send me a message at sam at and uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video play with passion